Hi, this is Kathy Atkinson. I'm the owner of Mind, Body, and Soul. And we're here today to do a mini class on a protocol that I developed and called the Perfect Trifecta for Intestinal Health. Now, I'm sure that you'll probably have a lot of questions. So um, what I'd like you to do is, if you have questions, just put them in the feed below. Put them in the comments below. And then tomorrow, I'm going to do a mini class a question, or sorry, I'm going to do a, a Q&A on my website, the um, Perfect Trifecta Q&A, and that'll be on my website, mindbodyandsoulonline.com. Um, and so if you have any questions, go ahead and put those in the comments below, and I'll do my best to answer them. Now, to be honest, the things that we're going to talk about today, I've already done many classes on. So a lot of your questions might be answered in those many classes, so I may be directing you to a previous mini class um, for some of your questions. But if you do have questions on the trifecta, please go ahead and, and put them in the comments below. So what I plan to do tonight is um, just take a few minutes and talk about the digestive process, talk about some of the functions of our gut, um, talk about some things that contribute to a gut imbalance, um, some indications that you might have a gut imbalance, and then we'll talk about um, the perfect trifecta, and which which is what um, I use, which is what my husband uses, what many of my clients use to help them improve their intestinal health. Okay, so the digestive system is um, well. The goal of the digestive system really is to reduce food, the food that you consume into molecules that are so small that the nutrients can be absorbed and used by the cells. So every cell in your body, every cell that's used to build every tissue, that's used to build every organ, that's used to build every system, really depends on the body's digestive system to provide the nutrients that it needs to keep it functioning. So digestion begins in the mouth, obviously, um, when we consume food and we chew it up really well and we salivate it really well, that bolus then goes down our esophagus. It goes into our stomach where um, hydrochloric acid is secreted and that mixes with pepsin to create pepsinogen to break down proteins. And then um, once the proper um, acidity, acidic level is reached, then it goes into the small intestine or the first part of the small intestine, which is the duodenum. And then there's some more enzymes and things that are, that are added to that mixture, which is now called chyme. And then it goes into the small intestine where most of the nutrients are absorbed. And then it goes into the large intestine. And a lot of there's a few, some nutrients that are absorbed there too, but there's some other processes that go down or that, that um, go on in the uh, large intestine. Now, we'll be talking primarily tonight about the small and large intestine. And the large intestine has over 100 trillion bacteria. Okay. There are more microorganisms in the colon than we have in the rest of our body's cells combined. Um, so what goes on in, in our gut? So in our, in our small intestine, our large intestine, there's absorption of nutrients. We have protection from toxins and allergens and, and um, microbes. We have, of course, continued digestion of food. We have production, not just absorption of vitamins and nutrients, but we actually have production of some kind types of vitamins um, in, that happens in our intestines as well. We have regulation of hormones. We have um, production of serotonin. Um, our entire immune system is protected from um, a to the toxic environment that we live in from our gut. Um, and in fact, 80% of our body's immune cells are produced in the small intestine and the colon. And um, the, um, we have a lot of serotonin that's produced in the gut as well. And we've got more, um, We've got neurotransmitters that are more, more neurotransmitters are in our gut than are in our brain. And that there's a, a big network of um, wires, not wires, um, 
there's a huge network. There's a lot of communication, various types of communication between the gut and our brain that gets the, the information back and forth between the brain and the gut. So gut function is really, really important and critical to our health. Um, I mentioned that you've got about um, 100 trillion um, bacteria in our gut. Well, the truth is we've got about 10 times more bacteria in our body than we have cells. Um, and about one pound of our weight is the billions of guts of bugs that are in our guts. Okay. So it's clear that, you know, we have bugs. <laughs> the question is, what kind of bugs do we have? Are they friendly bacteria that are going to support um, our health? Or are they unfriendly bacteria that are going to be damaging to our health? So um, that's really a big issue today because we've got so many things that happen or that are going on in our environment that are actually detrimental to bacteria because we've got this mentality that bacteria are bad, um, bad for us. There was, um, I think it was Hippocrates. Yeah, Hippocrates that, that, I think it was Hippocrates, said that, no, it wasn't, sorry. It was Pasteur that said that, the, that um, bacteria are what causes disease. And then about a year later, he came back and said, I was wrong. It's not bacteria. It's not the bugs that cause a disease. It's the terrain. But the damage had already been done. And so we've got this mentality that bacteria are bad. Um, and so there's a lot of things that happen in our environment that, um, are des that's designed to eliminate bacteria. We have chlorine that limit that kills bacteria. We have sodium fluoride. Fluoride kills bacteria. Alcoholic beverages, antibiotics, of course, and not just antibiotics that we consume ourselves, but antibiotics that show up in our food source. So it, in meat that we consume, if they've been injected with with um, antibiotics, those antibiotics are actually showing up in us. Um, birth control pills are designed, or well, not designed to, but birth control pills contribute to an intestinal flora in your imbalance. Um, poor eating habits and stress and disease and and poor dietary fiber and you know unfortunately even um, infant formula feeding. And then of course we can add you know antibacterial hand soap that people are using all the time now. Um, that all of this contributes to an imbalance in our gut flora. So how do you know if you have an imbalance? Well, a lot of the things that happen now that are kind of commonplace in our society are actually an indication that there is an imbalance of gut flora. Things like diarrhea and constipation or um, gas and bloating or allergies or eczema or you know, irritable bowel is very common now and that's an indication of an intestinal imbalance. Um, inflammatory bowel, kidney stones, um, even things like ear infections or strep throat, um, Crohn's disease, um, lactose intolerance, and you know even athlete's foot. All of these things that are kind of common are really indications of an intestinal um, imbalance in our gut. So after working with some of my clients and working just with my own personal health, and through my studies, I, dis I discovered this um, protocol that I call the perfect trifecta that we use that really has improved our gut health. And some of the ways that we've known it is just because, you know, our digestion is better. Um, we don't have problems with constipation. Um, and a lot of the sugar cravings have, have um, gone away. So here's what we do. So every morning when we get up, we do some kind of probiotic. We might, well, our probiotic of, of preference is actually milk kefir. And I like milk kefir um, over any other capsule or uh, water kefir or even kombucha because as I talked about in that probiotics mini class that we did, um, there are different types of friendly bacteria. Some are transient, which means they go in, they do good things, and then they leave. And some are colonizing, which means that they start to live in our gut. And milk kefir actually has both. So if I'm traveling, you know, I might take a, a probiotic with me just so that I can keep putting those friendly bacteria in. But um, at home, we just start every morning with a kefir smoothie. And the kefir smoothie is really easy. We just, you know, make the milk kefir. And then in the morning, you know, we 
strain it so we've got the kefir grains that we can mix more with and then um, we make our smoothie with the kefir we have we add a banana which is a prebiotic um, when we first started making them we added some raw honey we don't really do that so much anymore the raw honey is a prebiotic as well but we just find that we don't need that extra sweetness when you first start making kefir it might taste a little bit tangy because you know our um, food supply isn't really doesn't really have that tang anymore it's more sweet and so that's what we're, we were used to at the time and so um, we added some raw honey but we don't anymore we add about a cup of frozen fruit whatever we have happen to have on hand and um, I might add a little bit of cinnamon maybe a little bit of vanilla if I feel like it and then we just blend that up and that's what we have for breakfast so every morning we're using some kind of a probiotic ours is a milk kefir but for some people you know they may not be ready to make milk kefir and so they might just have a probiotic capsule and then in the afternoon um, and for me it's about the time that my husband leaves for work he leaves for work about two o'clock at least right now he has been and so about the time that he leaves for work um, I take a glass of water and I add um, some clay or some diatomaceous earth now when I was first starting this I used clay all the time and if as I mentioned in the um, the mini class that I did on clay and diatomaceous earth you might start out with only you know a, a fourth of a teaspoon or an eighth of a teaspoon depending on what's going on with you but um, at this point we just we use a, about a teaspoon of clay we put that in a cup of water and we drink that and um, if I'm using the diatomaceous earth I usually use a little bit more than a teaspoon um, and we do that every afternoon now as I said for us that you know that happens to be about about two o'clock for you that might be when the kids come home from school that you, you know that's your reminder to do it it might be when your favorite program comes on in the afternoon if if you have something that you watch every day on television or listen to every day you know a podcast or something but some you know have some kind of a trigger that says oh yeah it's time for me to take my clay my clay water um, and then in the evening before we go to bed we chop up some garlic we let it sit for 14 minutes and then we take a spoonful of the garlic and we swallow it like a pill with a glass of water we don't you know don't chew it up or anything now why do we do that okay let's talk a little bit about why's you know what what's with this perfect trifecta that makes it perfect for intestinal health so with the probiotic in the morning that we're taking every morning with our milk kefir that we're taking every morning or with the probiotic capsule that we're taking every morning um, what that's doing is putting friendly bacteria into our gut okay now we talked about in the mini class how um, some bacteria have an easier time going getting through the digestive juices of the stomach some have a more difficult time and um, it seems to be the colonizing ones that have an easier time but when you take one that has a capsule or something that has the, the uh, transient more the transient variety of probiotics that's when you'll usually have um, a larger quantity so it gives them a better chance of some substantial probiotics getting through um, so what that does is put friendly bacteria in our gut okay so in the afternoon when we're taking our clay water why are we doing that so clay is primarily primarily negatively charged so is diatomaceous earth toxins parasites radiation heavy metal those are all primarily positively charged so as I'm drink when I drink my clay water as it goes through my body it's attracting all the things that I don't want okay so it's attracting the parasites it's attracting um, yeast it's attracting unfriendly bacteria and some of some um, things I've read have said that it's because of that positive negative charge some have said they're not sure why they just know that the, the bacteria the bad bacteria are attracted to the clay and so as it's going through the body the bad bacteria is attracted to the clay and I'm it's helping to my body to eliminate unfriendly bacteria okay so in the morning I, I insert I consume friendly bacteria in the afternoon I'm drinking the clay water which helps my body to remove unfriendly bacteria um, and then in the evening we chop up our garlic we let it sit on the cutting board for 14 minutes why do we do that 
Well, when you chop up garlic, it begins to release a compound called allicin. Allicin is a very strong natural antibiotic. At about six and a quarter minutes, there's a surge of allicin. It dies back down and then it continues to release. Another six and a quarter minutes goes by, there's another surge of allicin. And so if I wait 14 minutes, I've gone through two of those surge cycles and I've got a good supply of a natural antibiotic. And then I swallow that like a pill, I go to bed and all night long in my body, the garlic, the allicin is killing unfriendly bacteria. Now garlic is also a prebiotic, which means it feeds friendly bacteria. So all night long, I'm killing my unfriendly bacteria that's in my body. I'm feeding the friendly bacteria that's in my body. And then I get up in the morning and I send in reinforcements. I take some more, um, I drink some more milk kefir. I might take another probiotic or something like that. Um, so I'm sending in the reinforcements so that they're, you know, we're, we're feeding the good guys, but we're also sending in the reinforcements. Um, I think of it kind of like the military, you know, if you've got somebody fighting a battle and those um, friendly bacteria really are fighting a battle, then you want to make sure that you're feeding them and that's the prebiotics and you want to make sure that you're sending them reinforcements so that they have a chance to, they're, they're not just getting overwhelmed. Um, so that's what we do. We found that it's very effective. Um, as I mentioned, no problems with constipation. Um, Sugar cravings have died down, which makes sense because what do what do unfriendly bacteria eat? They eat the white sugar, they eat the white flour, right? So friendly bacteria eat fruits and vegetables and um, grains and things that are things that are actually good for our health. That's what the friendly bacteria eat as well. And so if we're putting in some friendly bacteria, we're going to be cutting down on the cravings for the things that feed the unfriendly bacteria. So that's what we do, perfect trifecta for intestinal health, just that, those three little things that we do every day. We send um, friendly bacteria in with the kefir or the, the um, probiotic. We drink our clay water to help remove the unfriendly bacteria. And then we take our garlic at night to kill the unfriendly feed the friendly, and then we start the next day by sending in reinforcements and drinking our milk kefir all over again, and then drinking our clay water in the afternoon and our garlic in the evening, and then we start the process all over the next day. So if you have any questions about the perfect trifecta for intestinal health or any of the things that I mentioned today, please put them in the comments. And then tomorrow, I'll have a perfect trifecta Q&A on my website. That's mindbodyandsoulonline.com. Um, and I'll be able to hopefully answer all of the questions that you have, or as many as I can. Um, and then um, it'll be great to, to hear from you. I don't know if there's anything else I can share with you tonight. There are some classes coming up. Be sure to check my website. There's a nutrition class coming up a restart class that's a nutrition education class as well with a with a um as well as having a sugar detox built in um, there's also the foot zone certification class that's going to be starting pretty soon but thank you so much for joining me i appreciate it um hopefully there's been some good information here that you'll be able to incorporate into your life that will help bring um, health and happiness to you thank you very much i appreciate your time talk to you soon bye-bye